Today's video is going to be your February edition of Anti-Haul. <laughs> That's a weird way to introduce it. Your February anti-haul. Hello. If you are new to my channel, hi, my name is Abby. Um, uh, anti-hauls are actually a series of videos originally started by Kimberly Clark here years ago. She kept doing them. I started doing them. Credit where credit is due. Kimberly, you're great. So... I've gathered some things that we have some stuff to talk about today. We actually have things to talk about. I feel like the last two months has been like, oh, well, here's some products. Like I'm not like really mad about it, but like we have some things to talk about today. But let's just jump in on all these freaking Valentine's Day collections. <sighs> Y'all, come on. There are like a couple of Valentine's Day things that look intriguing, but when you look at all of the Valentine's Day releases next to each other, whether it's Natasha Denona, uh, Kylie Cosmetics, what else do we got? Oh, that's Dose of Colors, Morphe, Beauty Bay. Well, Beauty Bay is slightly different, but it's also worse. ColourPop, She Glam. Every Valentine's Day releases are so... There's no creativity, really, with Valentine's Day releases these days uh, because they just rely on the fact that, oh, it's cute and red or chocolates and cherries and hearts and stuff. And, like, everybody loves hearts. I will say, of all of the products that have come out for Valentine's Day, the one that actually has some really cute packaging is the Kylie Cosmetics one. Like, not gonna lie, I think this is cute as hell. If it wasn't sold by Kylie Cosmetics, I might be more inclined to think that I want it. But like... When you look at the palette itself, I'm like, this is just a ColourPop palette. It's further kind of emphasizing the fact that Kylie Cosmetics and ColourPop come from the same lab. So whenever you think about buying Kylie Cosmetics, it's the same quality as ColourPop, realistically. Um, you're really just paying for Kylie's name and that's it. Because uh, if you wanted to buy something that was like the same quality and similar packaging, realistically, ColourPop, like... I'm not a fan of ColourPop most of the time, but if you're gonna pick between Kylie Cosmetics and ColourPop, just buy fucking ColourPop. Because this Valentine's Day collection, objectively, it's kind of cute. Like the little, like the blush that comes in like a little chocolate bag, that's kind of cute. The little blush sticks that are in heart shaped. The lashes that come in a heart box, that's not really an original idea though. There's been plenty of brands that have come out with fake lashes that come in little heart boxes. The palette itself is actually quite boring and a little bit confusing. And like looked at it and I was like, is this just a ColourPop palette? Like, is this just a ColourPop palette? It very much looks like one. Um, and then there's liquid lipsticks, which I don't even like anyway. So there's like nothing in here that I really need. Something about the Valentine's Day releases this year have really, like, there's a lot. There's a lot of Valentine's Day releases. Like this one, uh, the Dose of Colors one, kind of cute, the packaging. Um, the actual product itself seems very boring. The only thing that really reads Valentine's Day is just the fact that it comes in a heart shape, but nothing else. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, Stars, Love Starts With You collection. Oh, isn't that cute? Cream blush sticks, I know I don't like those. $22 for a cream blush stick? No. Eyeshadow palette that's four colors that's just kind of like bleh, fine. That's $26. And then a two in one lip pair. What is that? A liquid lipstick plus a lip gloss on top? Not quite sure what that's supposed to be. Yeah, it's a lip gloss plus a matte lipstick. Are you supposed to use them together? Why would you put on a matte lipstick if you're going to put lip gloss on top of it? I never really quite understood that. Like, if you're going to do a lipstick, just put on a fucking lipstick. Like, don't. I feel like putting on a lip gloss on top of a matte lipstick kind of defeats the purpose of going through the process of making the matte lipstick look like crisp and clean. Am I wrong? Like, <laughs> you look at me and you're gonna tell me that I'm wrong? Am I the only one who thinks that? I don't know, but this collection doesn't even read Valentine's Day in the slightest. For something to really be original for Valentine's Day, I feel like... I don't know, you, you gotta knock it out of the park. You gotta be wowed. Like a lot of these just seem kind of lazy and it's something that they would have put out any other time of the year, but the only thing that makes it like very blatantly Valentine's Day is that it comes in a heart. Like, okay, give me an anatomical heart palette, please. Like, <laughs> that'd be kind of gross actually, Never mind. Both of those are boring. What else do we have for Valentine's Day? Oh, Morphe's? Oh my God, this Morphe palette? This is so, this looks, this. That you, um, you had, you, you, you could. Morphe doing the nine pan palettes. Like I know ColourPop doesn't own nine pans. They don't at all. But this looks so derivative of a ColourPop palette, but worse. That like, why, why? 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 It's the Be Mine palette. Wow, so original. From Candy Apple Red to Pops of Pink. You have like a light pink, a medium pink, and then like a bunch of neutrals. Like, okay, that's fine. Like, 
boring. I don't need it. It's not my thing. I'm not a fan of Morphe anyway, so. And the packaging is also kind of lazy design-wise. Morphe is one of those brands that their logo is actually quite crisp and clean looking. Check out my last video where I was doing logos. But the, the palettes themselves and the actual products have such uninspired packaging. It's so phoned in. Like there's not much inspiration behind it. It just looks really like last minute graphic design is my passion type design. Morphe never really wows me, but are we surprised? No. She Glam is another one that came with a Valentine's Day collection. It's a heartbeat lip to cheek blush tint and a glitter and glow liquid eyeshadow set. Okay, that's kind of cute, the packaging, but I will tell you, um, if the name She Glam sounds uh, familiar, it's because it's Shein's brand. Shein as in the fast fashion company that puts out terrible quality products for really low prices, having the largest selection of plus size stuff on the internet for affordable prices. So it's a double-edged sword, fuck Shein. <laughs> anyway, there is no reason to buy makeup from Shein, from She Glam, because it's kind of like a frivolous thing and there are so many brands out there that put out things that you can trust for just as low of prices. There are so many other options for you. <laughs> like there's no reason to buy from She Glam. And also I've heard that the quality is bad. Like every review I've seen of it has been a bad quality. So like, you know, again, another reason why you don't need it. Beauty Bay, this palette I might actually redesign in my next video because this palette annoys the fuck out of me. Beauty Bay put out the, um, the Love Notes palette. Where is the love in this? Where is, where is the love? Where is the, this is, oh my God, this is such a frustrating palette. Beauty Bay, Beauty Bay often does this where they put out palettes that are much too large uh, for no reason, because this palette, I could cut it in half and there would still be colors that it doesn't need. Um, because when you look at the actual color story, it's not a bad one. It's been done a million times. Like this looks like the Norvina palette, like the original one that came in like the, the velvet packaging, but like it's been done before. But the fact that this is so large, it's not the most expensive thing in the world, but it's so big for no reason. Like there's two, creamy mattes in here that are virtually the same color. There's a powder blue that's leaning on lavender and then a straight up powder pastel lavender and then like a very, very light pink and then a white. And it's like, there's so many pastels in here that are so similar to each other. They're not gonna get that much use out of both of them because they're gonna serve the same purpose. If you're gonna have light colors, if you're gonna have pastels, at least make them like slightly different enough because the actual amount of pigment, the amount of like saturated pigment in those pastels is so much less than the deeper shades and the more like rich shades that you can't really tell the difference between like a pastel lavender and a pastel periwinkle. It's like very, very little difference. Um, and it's only going to show up on like very specific skin tones that have that much of a difference. This is just, I'm gonna cut it in half for a video. Not like physically cut it in half, I'm gonna bring it in Photoshop and cut it in half. Okay, so it's $18, so it's not expensive. Why is it 20 shades when it could be like 10? Literally, it's four rows. Make it 10 shades. 10 shades would be just fine. This is boring and it's way too pastel and I don't like it. One thing that I have to talk myself out of because A, um, it's just cute as hell and it looks really delicious. Uh, Laneige is putting out a chocolate lip sleeping mask and it looks like a chocolate pudding. Um, the brand images are very tempting and very enticing. I love chocolate pudding. I love chocolate mousse. This looks like that, but when I bought, I have, I, I've owned the Laneige lip sleep mask, like the original one. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. It doesn't work for me. Um, other sleeping masks work for me better. Um, I'm trying to think of the one that works really well. I don't even remember off the top of my head. Oh, the Agave lip mask from Bite Beauty that doesn't exist anymore to its fullest potential. This, I, I don't like the original. So I don't know if this one is gonna have different ingredients besides the chocolate, because at this point, the only enticing thing would be that it's chocolate, but if it's not gonna do the like good stuff for my lips, 
that I would want out of it because it's $22. I don't need this. Like if you like the original Laneige lip mask and you want one that's like a slightly different flavor, like, you know, go for it. But like, I don't need it because I didn't actually like the original. And the fact that it looks like chocolate mousse is not gonna entice me into it. No, ma'am. No, no, Abigail. No, Abigail. That's my name. <laughs> um. This is something that when I saw it on my feed, I was like, oh, this is pretty. Okay, damn. Urban Decay actually released a palette that wasn't a naked palette. Holy crap. Though, looking at it, this one could be a naked palette. The funny thing is, the last two naked palettes that Urban Decay has come out with, their color is not based in like the idea of like nature or naked. Obviously something if it's like like flowers or purple and blue and stuff. Naked Cyber really had nothing to do with naked. And then Naked Ultraviolet had really nothing to do with naked. Naked Wild West or whatever, that one kind of made sense. But this is their new Wild Greens palette. And like at first glance, y'all, I was like, this is pretty, this is really pretty. Cause the branding images is very lush. It's very um, inviting, it's very enticing. I th actually think they did a good job with the actual design of the palette. I like the snake motif and I like the plants. I don't care about the mascara, but I do like that they um, didn't have an eyeshadow brush placement in this, in this palette. But the more I look at it and when I looked at the swatches, the swatches are so desaturated and sad. The swatches are so, bland like if you're gonna have wild greens as your theme give me some rich and lush green tones give me some depth give me some tree tones like these are all like just the most pastel this looks like the like ColourPop the child palette like the one with all of the kind of muted greens if you're gonna put out a palette that's themed around nature and around greens. Don't give me muted greens. I don't want winter greens. I want spring and summer greens. Thank you very much. I want things to look rich and pretty or at least more saturated than the colors that they have in here because I don't dislike the tones. Um, like they have kind of more of an army green and then a more minty green, but only half the palette is green and there's so little depth in it. And the darkest green is a shimmer? Why are the darkest colors in here shimmers? Why? <laughs> it's just, uh... Nature inspired earthy neutrals and wild greens, all new California. And I mean, I guess maybe it's just because I've lived in like the evergreen state my entire life. And the idea of wild greens makes me think of like the trees here that are all like dark and, and like lush and spooky. And like, I don't know, maybe California greens are just like more desaturated and lighter and paler. I don't know. These are not the greens that I want. This is iceberg lettuce. I want spinach, please. It's a cute palette. It's a cute packaging and it had potential. Gah, don't need it and I don't want it. Oh man. <laughs> Next, this was something that you guys tagged me in and okay, I will say, this is from a K beauty brand called Soul Mamas, like soul the place, but I don't know why. I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know it's like, it's it's basically a shit post of a release. They they partnered with Oscar Mayer, as in Oscar Mayer Wieners and Oscar Mayer Baloney. And they put out a baloney face mask. And like, you know, this is funny. This is hysterical. Is it ridiculous? Yes. Is it cursed? Absolutely. I don't need this. <laughs> it also has witch hazel in it, which my face does not like notoriously. Um, so like, I would not want to use this on my face anyway, because witch hazel irritates the shit out of my face. God, this is so cursed, but they did such a good job with the packaging. <laughs> like the packaging is spot on Oscar Mayer. So it's like, on one hand, I got to give it to them for like really going in on it. But like, I don't need this. <laughs> And I have no want for it, no need for it, no wish to own this in my life. God, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's only $5. That's at least not too expensive. Put it on your face, not on your sandwich. Oh God, yeah, no, do not eat witch hazel. For the love of God. No. Oh man. Yeah, this is, this is hysterical. This made me laugh so hard. I was like an Oscar Mayer wiener baloney face mask. It's a gimmick. It is 100% a gimmick. Is it an expensive gimmick? No, it's a cheap gimmick. It's cheap. It's a cheap gimmick, but also like a cheap face mask. So like, 
at least you're not spending $30 on a face mask. Like, at least you're spending $5 on, like, a shit post of a face mask, which is the same price as really any other face mask that you're going to get from the drugstore or from Ulta. Like, <laughs> oh, God, it's so stupid. I just, I had to talk about this because you guys tagged me in it so many times and just, like, the images are terrifying. <laughs> the images of this mask. Oh. Baloney mask benefits. <laughs> This is actually great. Witch hazel botanical and seaweed derived ingredients protect and hydrate. Collagens lock in moisture and promote skin elasticity. Minimizes the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Okay, this is pretty standard for all face masks. Baloney design induces unparalleled serotonin surges and a prolific amount of selfies. <laughs> That's the only reason they came out with it was to be fucking trolls. And you know, <sighs> Do what makes you feel good and gives you serotonin. But like, if this is not going to bring any joy into your life beyond- I mean, if it's gonna irritate your face, don't buy it just for the shits and giggles. Like, look at the ingredients first, please. Like, don't just buy it because it's funny. But it is funny. So like, I don't know. If it looks like the ingredients are gonna work for your face, fucking go for it. But it's not gonna work for me. So I don't need this. This isn't my cup of tea. Or <clears throat> piece of bologna. <laughs> It literally just looks like people bit holes out of the eyes and the mouth. <laughs> oh, man. At least they went hard on the gimmick. Like, that's... I kind of love that, though. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay. Now let's move on to something. The last thing that I'm more serious about. Okay, Abigail, stop laughing. <sighs> I have a bone to pick. This... Hmm. This came out... At the end of last month, from Item Beauty, which is Addison Rae's makeup brand that immediately got fast-tracked into fucking Sephora for some reason, why I should trust her opinion on makeup and skincare at all, I don't know. Her entire fucking TikTok is full of undisclosed sponsorships, but go off. Item Beauty put out a, uh, a face mist, which like, you know, face mists are fun, but it is the Screen Break, our blue light and anti-pollution face mist. A botanical powerhouse infused with ashwagandha and dandelion oil to shield and refresh tired, screen-drained skin. Clinically proven to protect skin from artificial HEV, blue light, and daily pollution. Fucking lies. Lies on top of lies. This is a fucking scam. You want to know why? Because, uh... Valkyrie, the Twitch streamer, literally just came out or tried to come out with the exact same product under the, the, they were like starting their own thing. It was a new brand and the brand and Valkyrie were eviscerated online by scientists, by uh, people who were like, that's a bold faced lie. Like there's literally been studies that have shown people had a screen exposed to their face for, I don't remember, I think it was like like two full weeks or something. There, there was a study that showed that there was no difference in skin damage at all between one half of the face that got no rays from the screen damage to it and then the other side. So this is a lie. You do not need a product to protect your skin from your phone or your fucking computer. No, this is a scam. This. Oh. With Valkyrie, I kind of felt bad for her because the way that she was getting raked over the coals uh, felt really sexist because it's like the energy was going towards her when it should have been going towards the like people who were scamming her and like selling her on this. Because if I was her, if I had people who were scientists and who were like wanting to start this thing that sounded really noble and cool, I'd be like, yeah, sure, let's go for it. Like, obviously you want to look into it, but if she's not a fucking scientist, you're going to believe the scientists, okay? But it was all found out to be a lie, to be a scam, to be not something that you actually need because the amount of like UV rays that you get from your computer and your screen is ridiculously small and literally nothing that wearing simple sunscreen for when you go outside would also protect you from. If you're wearing sunscreen during the day for like outside and, and wearing sunscreen daily, you do not need an additional thing to protect your face from the screen. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. I got so fucking pissed when I saw this. I was like, are you kidding me? Like there's no way 
her audience is far younger, right? And so people are not going to be as discerning or as skeptical of the product. And they're going to see that Addison Ray told them that this is good and that they need it and that they should buy it. And so they're going to go out and ask their mom for money to go buy it. Valkyrie's fans were not like that. Um, they were like, hey, this sounds weird. <laughs> How about no? And the brand just shut it down. They canceled it completely. They're like, okay, right. You guys were right. You caught us. So there's no way that the brand didn't know that that happened. Like there's no way they were completely oblivious to that because it happened a few months ago. Like maybe they had the product in, in development already, but to then just ignore that and just continue with the release is very, it's, it's irresponsible and it's shady and it's, um, it's, it's, it's gross. It's frankly gross because um, your audience is very impressionable. So much of your TikTok has included undisclosed sponsorships that like, I don't trust your opinion about literally any makeup or skincare product at all. So this doesn't look good. Like, I mean, I'm clearly not the target audience for Addison Rae. And you know, I'm annoyed that the products got fast tracked into Sephora because this is bullshit. Like this is ridiculous. Like, I already get annoyed when brands come out with products to fix problems that we didn't have before, like to make up new problems and then sell us products to fix it. This is one of those things. <laughs> like, there is no skin damage from looking at your screen. There is skin damage from the sun outside and skin damage from free radicals in your life. But there is no specific blue light UV rays coming out of your fucking devices that you need to buy a spray to counteract it or to fix it or to prevent it. Like it doesn't exist. Poof, it doesn't exist. This is, this is fucking snake oil. This is snake oil for, th for the new generation of TikTok fans. And it pisses me off. Like it was like Valkyrie got chewed, chewed out so bad. The double standard is astounding. It's a scam. Like it's, it's, it's fucking bullshit. It's so stupid. Like I'm so mad about it. Ugh, it's gross. And um, I, I, I have literally no desire to buy anything that she is selling. Um, and this is the, the biggest proof of that. Uh, I didn't mean to get as uh, angsty at the end there, but you know, sometimes you just gotta get real angsty because um, People are selling you bullshit. People who have gigantic platforms who are fast-tracked into one of the biggest makeup retailers in the fucking world. It annoys me. It's frustrating. That's everything I wanted to talk about today. If you want to check out any of my previous anti-hauls, I will have a link in a card and in the description of my playlist of the last 40 some odd anti-hauls. When I get to 50, I should do like a big, I don't know, I should do like a big thing. I'm getting close. There's like a couple more months, but uh, yeah, check out any of those if you're curious because I do them every month. Um, and if there's ever anything you see that you want me to talk about, tag me in the comments. Well, don't tag me in the comments, just comment and uh, let me know if there's ever anything that you think that I should talk about, that you think I should see and you think that would annoy the hell out of me because I like ranting and I haven't ranted in a little bit. Uh, for today's song of the day, let's see. What could today's song of the day be? Ooh, actually, today's song of the day. Did I mention Pine Barrens from Jakey? I don't know if I did. I think his EP is coming out like in a few days. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Pine Barrens from Jakey as in Nakey Jakey. I might have had this be a fucking song of the day. I don't know. It's great. It's a great music video. It's a great song. I like Jakey stuff. I think it's cool. So Pine Barrens from Nakey Jakey from Jakey <laughs> is your song of the day. Link to that will be down below. Um, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a good week so far. Uh, give this video a like if you liked it. Please do. That would be very helpful to me because it lets me know that you want me to keep doing these super helpful. Also subscribe if you are new here and would like to see more of me because I upload two to three times a week lately. And uh, most of the time we talk about makeup. Sometimes we talk about other things. I don't know. I have a giant collection of manga right now. So eventually I'll start talking about anime again. I don't know. I hope you are uh, staying hydrated, staying well rested, um, staying safe, S safe, hydrated, and rested. Uh, do, do those things. Take care of yourself. Um, have a good day, everyone, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. <laughs>